more and more of our people into poverty. The Honorable President succinctly summed up what is expected of us. Henceforth, he said, I quote, in trying times, we have shown as a country courage and resilience time and time again. We have pulled ourselves back from the brink of despair and inspired hope, renewal and progress. Now we must do so again, I close quote. The ravaging impact of the pandemic shows that our province was not spared. The adverse effects of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic have seen many people unexpectedly demise, with many businesses closing, the provincial economy declining, and people losing their jobs. Honorable Speaker, the Northern Cape Province cumulative COVID-19 deaths currently stand at 2,705, which translates into a fatality rate of 2.5%, which is slightly lower to the national average, which stands at 2.7%. These better results attest to our progress to make our province successful by improving public health in the province. Thus far, just above 11,000 people were hospitalized due to COVID-19 since the start of the pandemic. In the current seven-day period, the number admitted patients, the number of admitted patients has decreased substantially to below 50. Madam Speaker, our President has reminded us that we are indeed a resilient nation. COVID-19 still remains a serious danger. Our efforts thus far would have been in vain if it were not for the gallant fight waged by our frontline workers who put up a brave battle under very difficult circumstances for almost two years at the front line against COVID-19. As a province, we take pride in these hero, heroes and heroines for the role they have played and continue to play in ensuring that we are relatively in control of the virus. Your efforts do not go unnoticed. Honorable Speaker, allow me to extend our deepest condolences to the families of all public servants who have lost their lives in the fight against COVID-19. Similarly, our sincerest condolences also to the families of all our people in the province who have lost loved ones as a result of the pandemic. Madam Speaker, as far as the economy and related factors are concerned, the debilitating impact of the pandemic has been as follows. Formal sector lost 28,000 jobs in quarter three of 2021 compared to quarter three of 2020. The same trend was observed in South Africa. All sectors declined at the start of the pandemic in 2020. About 70% of the industries experienced a decline at the start of the pandemic in 2020. Increases were observed in most industries except construction and transport shared about 9,000 and 1,000 jobs respectively in our province. Northern Cape's official unemployment rate decreased by 3.2% to 24.9% in quarter three of 2021 compared to quarter two of 2021. Expanded unemployment in the Northern Cape decreased by 1.2% to 49.1 percent in quarter three of 2021 compared to quarter two of 2021. I hope that this message is being understood that official unemployment in the Northern Cape is on a steady decrease and as well as expanded unemployment in the province is on a steady decrease. If you look at the statistics with regard to other provinces, the Northern Cape is the only province that records decrease in official unemployment 
and decrease in expanded unemployment at the same time. <laughs> unemployment in South Africa has been increasing whilst Northern Cape unemployment rate has experienced a general decline, making it the lowest in the country. For the first time in many years, Western Cape was overtaken in two quarters, quarter one and quarter two of 2021. Quarter one and quarter three of 2021, we managed to overtake Western Cape to become the province with the lowest official unemployment rate in the country. <laughs> official unemployment, official youth unemployment is standing just above 37%. This is a serious indictment on all of us. We must use job opportunities in the provincial government to affirm young people. That's one of the issues which was raised by young people when they confronted us yesterday. They were led by Comrade Kahisho around the issues of youth unemployment. And as the provincial government, we have to play an active role to ensure that we reduce youth unemployment, which is currently standing at 37 percent. The government also has a role to create jobs. Developmental state has an active role to play in the economy. As at August 2021, the provincial government has 24,026 employees on our payroll of which 6,000 are within the ages of 18 and 35 age bracket. Of the, the 24,026 provincial government employees, 15,700 are women, which is 65.3%. Out of the 24,000 employees on the payroll of the provincial government, 65% thereof is women. Ladies and gentlemen, though the picture looks bleak, we are not to despair. We remain resilient and resolute to our vision, and we are in a better position now. The administration has developed coherent strategic planning and governance strategies for implementation in the province. The strategies primarily focus on the following, integrated service delivery, and governance model, provincial growth and development plan, vision 2040, and the provincial spatial development framework. These strategies guide the work of government in attaining the vision set out by the sixth administration. Madam Speaker, in an effort to facilitate internal cohesion in the work of the different spheres of government, we establish a strong and well-functioning intergovernmental relations system. This year, we will work towards a complete implementation of the district development model to facilitate coherence and efficiency in the work of the different years of government. Madam Speaker, during the occasion of my inauguration in 2019 at Lirato Park in Kimberley, I articulated the following characteristics of a modern, growing, and successful province that we seek and work to build as this sixth administration. A province which cares for the vulnerable and makes life worth living for them. And this entails increased number of households with access to the electricity grid, water, and adequate sanitation. A province that is at the cutting edge of the fourth industrial revolution, which prioritizes quality education, training, and retraining of young people. A province that strives to improve the health profiles of its residents. A province whose youth have reasonable access to opportunities and prospects in life and are allowed to dream. A province where all people, especially women and children, can freely enjoy their streets and environment without being molested, raped, or abused. A province in which people who are differently abled or disabled are embraced and equitably given opportunities. A province with a strong government that effectively fights corruption 
and downright laziness. A province that builds partnerships between the different sectors of society for shared growth and development. And lastly, Honorable Speaker, a province in which the political leadership are hard to work in. When I speak of political leadership, I don't speak of the executive. I speak of all of us, all MPLs from different political parties. We should be hard working. Pay attention to detail. We should be incorruptible and give hope to the hopeless in a very practical and tangible way. Speaker, I will come back to these issues to demonstrate the extent to which we have managed to work on them. Madam Speaker and honorable members, we made a commitment to build a capable developmental state for effective service delivery. The developmental state, which should be capable and professional, is crucial to the attainment of our developmental goals. All of our set apex programs are a mirage unless we build a capable and effective state. We must ensure that the government that we lead implements a range of measures, such as instituting more rigorous criteria for the appointment of senior public service managers, mechanisms to deal effectively with corruption and to ensure that citizens are served with diligence and utmost respect. The issue of instability in government at all levels, the issue of stability in government at all levels is critical. We are comprehensively engaged to review the current organizational structure, albeit under stringent financial conditions. In order to align our departmental structures to the constitutional mandate, budget, strategic plans, and also our service delivery models. Madam Speaker, as part of our vision to make the province successful, we set ourselves the goals of achieving clean audits across all provincial departments. For the audit cycle of 2020-2021, the province reported clean, three clean audits, namely the Office of the Premier, Department of Social Development, and Provincial Treasurer. We attained six unqualified audits with findings and three qualifications. There was an improvement as the Department of Economic Development improved from a qualified audit opinion to a financially unqualified with findings. For the 2021-2022 audit cycle, we intend to build on this progress. Madam Speaker and honorable members, at the local government level, we are pleased with the improvements shown by the Namakwa District Municipality by achieving a clean audit and in so doing, joining ZF Mtrao, Francis Bart, and JTG. <laughs> we are targeting 10 municipalities for clean audits, which include Pixli Kasebe and the five key local municipalities. We are strengthening Operation Clean Audit to assist in the achievement of clean audits for the targeted 10 municipalities. Madam Speaker, in our previous address, we announced the Provincial Macro Organization of Government, PMOC process. We are happy to report to this August House that substantive progress has been made to date. The following key aspects of its work have been attended to. The establishment of the new Department of Agriculture environmental affairs, rural development, and land reform. And here I must confess, I did not Apologies for that break in transmission, but that was the state of the province address uh, with uh, Premier uh, Dr. Zamani Sol 